Hello everyone, welcome back to Lucky Loaders 15 and in this video we'll be previewing day two of Royal Ascot. Before we get into the analysis and selections for day two, I just want to reflect on how today went. Day one, it was a bit disappointing for us in the end. We came away with no winners. We had a couple of place horses, some each ways, but nothing to write home about. In the first race, one of our two selections was Accidental Agent. Unfortunately, he blew the start, but bookmakers did give uh, give you your money back, or most of them did, as a goodwill gesture, which they probably had to. It's a shame he didn't complete the race, Accidental Agent, because he actually had some form tied in uh, with the horses that came to the fore, such as Lord Glitter and beat the bank he obviously beat him in the race last year and it was a shame that he uh, didn't really uh, get out of uh, first gear and didn't compete in the race and I think maybe um, that's probably his chance gone for the season now I'm not sure uh, what other tracks he would be good at so a bit disappointing there for connections uh, Arizona I thought that was a good ride by Ryan Moore considering early on um, he didn't really look happy and uh, Ryan Moore was getting agitated in the saddle asking him for pressure and he responded really well I think he's going to be a better horse further in trip our selection Guildsman got the each way finishing in third place so that wasn't too bad there Mab's cross she ran her race uh, but uh, blue point was too good I think maybe uh, the stool um, positioning of Batash went against him if he maybe had been involved in the action a bit more early on he might have uh, just been able to get the better of blue point but they've got an exciting rivalry and I might expect um, Batash to uh, reverse the form maybe next time out if they were at a track away from Ascot so be interesting to see uh, how that rivalry develops later on in the season uh, other winners uh, that were noteworthy today obviously Circus Maximus a late um, entry for uh, uh, a no Brian it was a good game performance in the end I'm gonna um, probably give uh, give the benefit of the doubt to Dan Hart I thought he actually ran a fair race he came there to win I think the ground was against him I think he wants quicker ground and I think uh, the stamina just uh, came in for a Circus Maximus who could probably handle the ground a little bit better than two darn hot. There was no excuses so he got in the right positions under Frankie de Tori. And maybe he's just not that that top quality horse that we thought he was as a two-year-old. I think he's still a good horse and people are only going to be mocking him because he's just not delivering his expectations. He still is running very well but it just came up short and I think maybe he wants better conditions and we're still learning a bit more about him as a horse and going forward maybe a race like the Sussex Stakes could see him to a good effect so I'm going to forgive him there in the long race um, the two and a half mile the Grand Vizier I didn't see that one coming a few shrewdies did uh, so good on you if you on that one and then in the last race First Nation he actually uh, did uh, blow blow the start and was always up against it Adeyeb I did uh, mention him in my summary but I was just maybe concerned about William Haggis's record at Royal Ascot he put that to bed obviously I didn't realize he hadn't had a winner since 2012 and I knew he didn't have many winners but he hadn't had a winner at Royal Ascot for quite some time so maybe his horses they were running well one master as well ran really well in the Queen Anne so maybe William Haggis definitely worth paying attention to his runners later in the week anyway enough of me waffling on in day one we'll get into the selections analysis as well of all six races tomorrow and it all kicks off with the Queen Mary a very tricky race to work out it starts at 2 30 as all the races do at Ascot over the next uh, few days and there's a lot of runners in this race tomorrow. It's a very difficult one to work out. Also as well, there's a lot more rain around tomorrow and the ground could get very testing. So it's going to be uh, looking at soft ground horses tomorrow and looking in the breeding as well to see if their relations handle soft ground. And it would be in the case here. Now the Wesley Ward runners of Kamari and Anna's Fast will form up quite a bit of the market here. I don't think they'll like the ground and I'm going to swerve them even though they've got a fantastic record in the race. Kamari is probably the best out of the two, winning by 15 lengths at Keeneland but it's hard to read into that form but his uh, two-year-old runner should always be uh, respected good vibes uh, won the Mary Gate at York in good style and the form of that race was quite a, a good one there for Harry Bentley and David Evans eight to one but makes at the moment might be concerned about the ground I think Ickworth tomorrow could go well if uh, you're back in Ickworth I would have uh, no worries there with the ground actually won on yielding to uh, soft ground at, uh, at the Curra last time out in good style winning a listed race so we know this horse for uh, Willie McCreary and Billy Lee tomorrow should give herself a good account but my selection is going to be uh, uh, the final song who um, won on Ascot over the course and distance on debut for Saeed Bin Suraf 
Christoph sued me on Book Before the Ride tomorrow. And you might remember, if you've been following me on Twitter throughout my career, that I was actually at Ascot when she won over the course and, de course and distance on Davy. She was a very impressive filly in the paddock and she bolted up. The forms worked out okay because the third place horse of Clive Cox went on to win very impressively at Bath the other day. And uh, that's looking like a good piece of form. Also as well, we'll be on the stand side, drawn um, to uh, go well. And there's a lot of pace over on that side as well. She likes to go um, from the front, or she did anyway when she won at Ascot. She likes soft ground as well, because she won on soft ground by Dark Angel. Good, uh, hardy side to be related to. I think there's a lot to like about Final Strong tomorrow. 11 to 2 of Coral at the moment. Five places, could be a bit of the dirt each way but I can't really see her finishing outside the frame. So that's going to be my selection in the Queen Mary. The Queen's of ours, the next Queen's race, the 305 for uh, the stairs, the three-year-old stairs over in Marlin, six, group two. And this one is headed uh, by Western Australia for Aidan O'Brien, who's obviously had a very good day today. Norway's well is second in. They're the ones that head the market. Now for me, Western Australia... I just don't think he's a good horse. Um, he did win uh, particularly well uh, coming up in a trip in a listed race at uh, Navan last time out. He could be a potential improver. And Australia, who's his sire, his runners have tended to get better uh, with age in his early, early sire career so far. But for me, Western Australia, I just haven't been impressed. And I'll be looking at something else. Norway, I think the ground's gone against him. I like Norway. Now, if the ground was quick... Um, I would be going um, definitely into this one. I would be getting in there. But for me, I have concerns about uh, his form on the ground tomorrow. Ryan Moore has been uh, nominated to uh, go for him. He's chosen Norway tomorrow. I'm actually on Norway for the St. Ledger. I backed him last year at like 33-1. to 1. So if he does go to St. Ledger, I think he'll have a good chance. But the ground, I think, will uh, have to be uh, have to really be dry to see Norway to be good effect. He would want fast ground and for me I'm going to be swerving him so the one I've come up with is uh, Jalmud for Charlie Appleby who obviously had a winner today at Blue Point uh, James Doyle booked for the ride two from two on turf and he won actually at a long shot last time out in a listed contest over a mile and a half he was staying on strongly at the end he might have a bit of a profile here of maybe like a cross counter kind of horse or maybe an old Persian he could be a good stayer uh, coming up in trip and I just think at 6-1 to one tomorrow, you can get that paddy power. He's a good each-way bet. We'll know he'll handle the ground. And uh, we'll know he'll relish the conditions as well. So for me, at 6-1, to one, I think you could do a lot worse tomorrow than Jalmud at 6-1 to one from an each-way angle. And what looks like a very uh, tricky race to work out. So that's my feelings on the Queen's Vars. The feature race of the day could be the feature race of the week. Uh, probably except the Gold Cup is the Prince of Wales over a mile and two. Furlong is a Group 1 contest. Magical leads away in the betting at the moment for Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien. Obviously, both had a good day today, teaming up for a double. 2-1 to one favourite. Won the Phillies and Mares on Champions Day over a mile and a half. Three from three this year. But I think, even though she is a very good quality horse, I think there's uh, better horses in here that uh, represent better value anyway. I think she's a bit too short for me. And um, I will probably be uh, going against her tomorrow. I am going against her. She did win the Gold Cup of Group 1 at the Curra last time out. But she's just beaten Flag of Honour on every start this year. She's been a pacemaker. And she's up against some better horses tomorrow. Sea of Class, William Haggis. Obviously, he's on the board today. Um, but this horse, who was very good last season, won all her starts apart from finishing second in the arc. Um, I think she might get pulled out uh, because of the ground. They're going to have discussions on it tonight. And there could be a massive rule four if they do. So, um, yeah, sea of class. I'm going to say they're not going to take their chances tomorrow. But if she does turn up, she is capable of going very close. But for me, the ground is the major concern uh, for me with that one. Crystal Ocean, again, I, I think he wants better ground. Connections say he might want soft ground. It's all a bit up in the air with Crystal Ocean on his ground. He's a bit of an unlucky horse. He's never done it in Group 1 company, but he's two from two this season. He's been in good form. So Michael Stout, Frankie de Tori, obviously a very good combination at Royal Ascot to follow. But I think they might come up short. The one uh, my money's come down on is a Waldgeist for uh, Pierre Charles Bourdieu and Andre Farb. Andre Farb has won the race twice before. He's 11 to 2, but makes it at the moment. He won't mind a bit of cutting the ground. He probably won't it. He won't want it too deep. But compared to some of these in the race, he'll be handling it a lot better than some of them. He won the Prix de Gane, Group 1 by four lengths 
at, uh, at our long shomp earlier in the season in good style. This has been the target all year from Andre Fabi. He's been very bold about him. I think he's a better horse now than when he ran here as a three-year-old when he finished in second place on testing conditions. He's 11-2 but makes at the moment. You can get that boy with sports and I think maybe again a bit of a dirty each way play here. He could go quite well and maybe make the frame. So that's my thought on the Prince of Wales. Again, I think it's a tricky race tomorrow. The Duke of uh, Cambridge uh, stakes group two for uh, the Phillies and Mares in the 420. I think this is a tricky race tomorrow and you're going to be wanting horses that handle the conditions. Rada for Sir Michael Stout. I'll be against because of the ground and also as well voracious. Uh, I can fly. Not sure about her form this season, but she could bounce back. Um, ran very well behind uh, Roaring Lion on Champions Day to finish in second place, but maybe uh, isn't in the right train of form at the moment. But like I said, Aiden O'Brien in good form. Uh, maybe could overly overturn that pretty baby. Again, I'm not sure about her staying. She could go on the ground. William Haggis coming into form as well. Uh, Anna Neerim could be an interesting one, but I'm just wondering, could she do it at Group 2 level? Um, and I think she, she'll she probably be there or thereabouts, but she might just get touched off on one. Rich Hannon um, loves this horse, but maybe it could, uh, could, could be a little bit too testing for her. But the one I've chosen here, again, though she's going to have to step up on form, but she's been in good heart so far this year. And that's Red T for Joseph O'Brien and Donica O'Brien, 16 to 1 but makes at the moment. Four places with Paddy Power on that, and I think that's a good each way bet. Finished third on a late start in Ireland in a group two. Won a handicap at the car by uh, four lengths, which is definitely a good sign. She was trained by Peter Hyatt over here uh, for the last couple of years, and she actually had some really good form on uh, cutting with cutting the ground so the condition should be up her street tomorrow she should not got bad draw from stall six as well so she could slot into a good position red tea for me at 16 to 1 even though she's got to find it a little bit in the ratings she is improving joseph o'brien as well has probably had this uh, race in mind she could have gone for a couple of other races at a bit of a lower grade they think this is probably a winnable race and red tea for me i think represents a good each way play at 16 to 1. we then go for the royal hunt cup which is probably the most toughest race of the day, or one of the more tougher races, a wide open handicap with 30 plus runners. A new graduate uh, is a favourite for Frankie Dottori and James Tate. Uh, ran about a 5 to 1, 6 to 1 shot with bookmakers at the moment. One by five lengths at Ripon. Was rated 90 um, before that run at Ripon, and now is rated 105. That's definitely a worry for me being raced so much in the handicap. It was a ground concern as well. I'm not sure he'll uh, like conditions. Settle for Bay for William Lee and uh, David Marnier. Uh, obviously won the race last year. 12 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment. Off a mark of 102. Has um, slipped down a couple of pounds from the handicap after being okay so far this season. But no horse has won this race uh, back to back for quite a long time. I think it's 70 years you have to go back for the last repeat winners. And for me, I'll be swerving there. My money, I've got two selections here for the race because I think you need a couple of selections in a race like this. It's very difficult to guess, but the two I've decided on is Raising Sand. I actually backed her this morning, or backed him this morning, I should say, 11 to 1. At the time of recording, 8 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment. Seven places with Paddy Power, trained by Jamie Osborne, who won this race a few years ago. Nicola Curry, could she become the first woman since Gay Calloway in 1987 to win this race? She possibly, um, or I should say, ride a winner at Royal Ascot. She probably uh, could do it tomorrow. Fourth, um, last time out in a very decent handicap at Ascot, over seven furlongs, was uh, probably the eye catcher to take out of that race. Going up to the mile, I think, will suit also as well. Won over the course and distance by two lengths last year on soft ground. So no worries there. Probably could go off favourite tomorrow. I think new graduate might be quite weak when it actually comes to betting tomorrow. So for me, Raisin Sand at eight to one, if, if, if this horse does become favourite, which it might, could be a negative because favourites haven't got a particularly good record in the race. But I think Raisin Sand has to be on the shortlist tomorrow and it's going to be one of my two selections. The other one I've come down on is What's the Story? You can get that 20 to 1 with bookmakers at the moment. Sky Bet Pen, seven, seven places on the race. There is 25s out there, but you're only getting six places. So if you want more multiple places, go on the 20 to 1. Uh, trained by Keith Dalgleish, who's yard in very good form. They had plenty of winners yesterday. 
and they have so far this season. Paul Moore running but for the ride. Now this horse finished fourth in the race last year and has been targeted for the race. Won a decent handicap at York on the last start and that form has been boosted as David O'Meara's firmament went and won a decent handicap at York again at uh, the weekend. So the form has been franked. This horse won't mind a bit of cutting the ground as well. He's won on soft before and there's a lot of things in his favour tomorrow and drawn I think on the correct side of the track. So that's my feelings there. Probably actually the most difficult race to pick of any tomorrow is in the Windsor Castle, a listed race. The last race of the day, 5.35. Temple of Heaven is the current market leader for Sean Levy and Richard Hannon. Uh, can make a good case for it. Two out of two this season. Won a very good race at Newbury over six furlongs. Dropping back to five furlongs. They obviously know it'll be doing its uh, best work late at the end. Could be a grand concern on this one here. And for me, I'll be uh, swerving it. Uh, also as well, Wesley Ward's got a couple in here, but we don't know how they're going to handle the ground. Um, the one I've come down on here is Summer Sands for Richard Fahey and Barry McHugh. Has a similar profile to possibly Sands of Marley, uh, who was owned by the same uh, owners in the Cool Silk Partnership Colours. Finished third in a decent race at York uh, behind um, Bombproof with Jeremy Nasida. The form's been let down today in the Coventry by Minoski, but Minoski did go on to win. Uh, a fair race at the Pontefract in very good style, so maybe you could forgive uh, Minoski today. Then went to um, Beverly on the latest start, Summer Sands, and just uh, got up to uh, beat O Purple Rain of Rich Hannons in the final strides. And No Purple Rain had some good form, winning a decent race at Nottingham, and finished second behind Pina Tubo of um, the Godolphin operation of Charlie Appleby's at Epsom in the uh, Woodcoach. So there's lots to like about uh, Summer Sam Samari, how his form ties up. Also as well by Coach House as well, who um, did okay on his only attempt on soft ground. So there is some hope there for Summer Sam Samari. You can get that 14 to 1 with Skybet at the moment and paying five places. Could be a good each way bet. Richard Farr, he won this race before with Ribchester as well a couple of years ago. So the stable know how to win the race. That's going to be my final selection uh, for day two tomorrow. So hopefully we can have uh, the winner tomorrow. It was a bit of a difficult first day today, but it was okay. Nothing special, nothing to write home about, but it wasn't too bad. Could have been worse. And uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, do a bit better tomorrow. So that's all i got to say. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button for more videos here on my YouTube channel and for more Royal Ascot videos throughout the week here at Lucky Lays 15. Also as well, leave your comments in the comments box below for your tips and selections for day two. I'd like to read your tips and selections. Also as well, follow me on Twitter as well for all my links to my work with my handle being at Lucky Lays 15. And that's all i got to say. So please come responsibly. Hopefully we can have some winners tomorrow and we'll be seeing you soon. Thank you.